in this lecture, we're gonna be talking about the p-value and the alpha value. Now these two values are present in almost every single statistical test. So it's important to understand what they represent and what the differences between the two are. So let's start with the p-value. The p-value we talked about in the last lecture, but I'll remind you guys what this means. The p-value measures how rare the results of your experiment are. So for example, if you get a p-value of 0 0.02, that just means that the results of your experiment are so rare relative to the null hypothesis that if you conducted like 100 experiments that were similar to your experiment, you would only see results as rare as yours 2% of the time. That's pretty uncommon. That means your results are fairly uncommon if the null hypothesis is true, meaning that it could be that your experiment is just an anomaly. But there comes a point in time when the p-value is just so small that it's not that your experiment was an anomaly, it's just that the null hypothesis was false from the get-go. And so the alpha value is a threshold. Typically, the alpha value is 0.05 meaning that if your p-value is less than this alpha value, your experiment results are just so rare that it's not that your results are an anomaly, it's that the null hypothesis was false from the get-go. So the idea is if your p-value is less than your alpha value, you would reject the null hypothesis. You would say, okay, this experiment is just way too rare, uh, to just happen. It's more likely that the null hypothesis was wrong from the get-go. If your p-value is greater than the alpha value, that just means that your experiment was typical. It wasn't very exciting in the sense that it was so much different from the null hypothesis. That doesn't necessarily prove the null hypothesis true. It doesn't necessarily mean to accept the null hypothesis. It just means don't reject it. You don't reject the null hypothesis. Now, a lot of students ask me, what if the p-value is equal to the alpha value? And my response is this. It's not going to be. You're never going to find a scenario where the p-value and the alpha value are the same. So I just don't worry about it. Either the p-value is less than the alpha value or the p-value is greater than the alpha value. So again, if the p-value is less than the alpha value, you reject the null hypothesis. And the, if the p-value is greater than the alpha value, then you don't reject the null hypothesis. Anyways, thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next lecture.